Okay, let's go ahead and look at a Google App Engine Python tutorial. Notice here to get to it is a little bit tricky. You have to go to console.cloud.google.com slash getting started question mark tutorial equals Python underscore GAE underscore quick start. This is definitely a, a weak part of some of the things that Google does, but there's some great tutorials if you can just find them. So we're gonna go through and create a project from scratch, run a hello world. We're gonna then tweak it, get inside of a JavaScript based editor, redeploy it, tail the logs, make sure that we understand from the very beginning to the end how to actually build applications using Google App Engine and Python. So let's go ahead and start here, say next. We're gonna create a project from scratch. So what we'll do is we'll call this um, Pragmatic uh, AI Hello. And I'm going to build that to my Pragmatic AI Labs account, which has um, some credits that I can use. Here we go. Now it's going through and it's creating a brand new project for me from scratch. This should really take just a second. And then once this project has been created, what it'll do is it'll let me actually use it. So I'm going to say that's fine. I want to use that. I'm going to confirm that project. And, and now what I can do is I can actually activate this cloud shell underneath here. And uh, it's going to become basically a development environment for me. So this is actually a pretty huge um, aspect of what's cool about the Google cloud ecosystem. So I'm going to deactivate uh, another project I was working on. I'm going to go through here to say clear. <clears throat> and uh, next, I, I even can do bash, just kind of clear that out here. And, and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go inside of a uh, directory that I cloned. But I'm going to just start from the beginning here so that you can see a fresh environment. So I'm going to go inside here and uh, remove this previous tutorial that I did. Here we go. And I'm going to clone this from scratch. So it says that you'd like to take this code here, throw it into the terminal. You can see I can just press there and it throws it in. I can now clone this. Uh, and then if we look at the next step, it says, please switch to that tutorial directory. So I can either type it in myself or I can be lazy and I can just have it fill it in for me. There we go. And now we'll be able to see that there's these scaffolding. And if you're a Python programmer, you'll know that requirements is where the packages are kept. A test file will test your application. The main file is where the application code goes. And the YAML file is where configuration file actually goes. So this looks like it's working successfully. I'm gonna go to next. Now we can go ahead and look at this main file here. Now, there's actually a couple ways that we can do this. For now, I'm gonna stick with what they say, uh, but there's actually a fancier editor that we could use. So you can see the main file's got some things in there, you know, kind of a, a you know really basic hello world. And then if you look at the YAML file, same thing. We can cap that. Uh, we can cap app yap.yaml. All it does is say use Python 3.7. Okay, well, that looks good. Well, let's go to the next step here. Now it's asking us to create a virtual environment. The virtual environment package itself is a third party package, but it's also embedded inside of Python 3. So you can do it a couple different ways. Well, let's just copy what they say though and say, let's make a new um, virtual environment here. Uh, in our case, uh, I'm going to again, copy what they say. Okay, sure. Virtual environment, um, hello world. Here we go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to activate this hello world. All right, let's activate this hello world. And, and the way you do that is once you've created this, this isolated Python environment, you source the bin directory inside and activate it. So that's what we're gonna do. And, and I'll even show you something that they don't show you, which is I always do this check, which is I say, which Python? And you'll see here that it'll show you that the Python is in the directory that you just created. So that's a, a nice follow-up step here. Now we can actually do a um, pip install-r requirements. So this will, 
if we go to this requirements file here, it, you can see that they actually have a pinned Flask app. So we're just gonna run that. And again, I can just be lazy and tell it to put that in there. There we go. Pip install, that's great. And then next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just run this locally to just check it out. So I'm going to go here, Python uh, main.py, run it locally, looks like it works, and we can do this web preview, and the web preview button here will just verify that I can actually um, check it out. So really cool development environment that they've got set up for you with um, Google Cloud. Uh, so looks like things are things are pretty much you know working as expected. Now let's do the next step, which is now let's push this uh, environment over to the Google ecosystem. So this is just running locally, right? Even though it's inside of a you know kind of a temporary environment. Um, so uh, what we're going to do here is we're going to now do a a, a deploy. So um, I'm going to uh, go through here and make sure that I'm I'm actually uh, deploying a, a new application. So we'll say uh, this G Cloud deploy. There we go. And um, let's go ahead and say, do you want to continue? Yes. And now it's actually going through and it's deploying it's it's creating it's creating a new application to deploy so well, that'll just take a second All right, now it's setting up uh, the traffic split for services, so it's doing the kind of final steps here. Okay, great. Uh, looks like that's been deployed. Oh, it, it, um, it's been basically set up, and I can just go back here. You can see that that's the, the actual step that it used to deploy. And now, uh, in order to visit it, I can just click here, and it looks like it did not deploy to the right one. Um, because I was on the wrong project. So what I can do is I can actually swap this out and tell it to deploy to the right project. So this is a nice little trick here is that uh, you can actually get fooled if you're working on multiple projects. And in, in my case, uh, I didn't put the, the project that I wanted to deploy to. So I'm gonna change, I'm gonna tell this to deploy to this environment uh, 15. So US West 2. Now it's gonna go through and you can see the difference here is that it says the project is Pragmatic AI Hello. So if you are working between multiple Google App Engine projects, that's just something to be aware of is that you really wanna pay attention to the output of your shell command and you can get confused because you, you, you may have um, noticed that something's happening, but it's actually deploying to the wrong project. There we go, it's uploading five files. And again, when this is done, it'll look the same as what we just looked at. Uh, it'll, it'll, we'll be able to click on this link here uh, and then we'll actually have had a uh, deployed application. Let's just take a second.
All right, this looks like it's in the final steps here. There we go. So so now um, you we I could just do this. That's one way to actually view it. So let's go ahead and co copy that way. Um, and so it didn't detect the browser. So let's go ahead and use this method here. So open a new tab. There we go. And we've got Hello World. Okay, so we've got this thing deployed inside of the Google Cloud ecosystem. Um, and then if we want to look at the status, this is the kind of the final section here, as I click on this, and it will give us this ability to go to the dashboard. Now we go to the dashboard, and then you can see there's essentially a like a little uh, monitoring system here to kind of go through things. So um, basically we're, we're we're ready to, you know, this thing's essentially complete, but I'm gonna go through and, and go to a, the next level. Now, now let's actually, let's actually edit this project here and make it do a little bit more than just kind of this hello world thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this, this pencil icon here, I'm gonna open up a full uh, IDE. Uh, and this is really a new direction that both Google and AWS is headed in, which is that you can actually edit your source code uh, directly inside of um, their their cloud environment. So I'm going to go again here to um, to this project. Let's let's go ahead and find the project that we're working with here. It looks like it's this one. This. Um, hello world main file here so I'll, I'll go ahead and um, cancel that close that out um, let's cancel this tutorial so now I've got the full window and I can just basically take stuff out of here so this is all stuff I don't want just taking up room uh, let's just double check so no I do want flask so let's take out this and then we also can take this out we don't need that Take out some of that, take out some of that, take out this stuff just to make this thing uh, actually show you how little code is actually uh, appearing here. Um, and uh, what we can do here is is we can actually, there's only one, one blank line, okay, there's two, and this is saying, what's this uh, message here as it says, that expected two blank lines. Okay, there we go. There's your second blank line. Um, oh, I'm sorry. That's where you want the blank line. And then you blank line there. So basically, it'll, it'll even give you this whole like kind of, um, you know, linting syntax here, which is pretty cool. So so now what I can do is I can actually make, let's, let's do something kind of fun here. Let's make another route. Let's call this one, you know, hello, hello YouTube tutorial and then we can add a you know change this like this is home page and then over here I can just say like um, uh, hello to and and then we call this hello to and and then this is actually will make this return some other thing so we can just say return more go and then this will say you know hello from two like that there we go and again I think let's see what this one says it says uh, expected two blank lines okay there's your second blank line all right so we, I've edited this whole thing looks like it's good to go so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this shell here and um, I even um, can do that deployment again. So I'm going to go through and look and go up arrow here. That's a, a nice little trick is just go back to your history and say, yeah, deploy. This is the project. I mean, this is the configuration file and this is the project. So let's go ahead and redeploy it again. So it's going to go through here. Look at those changes that I just made. Yeah, we're good with that. Um, and then it's going to redeploy this application. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, that looks like that's working successfully. And, and we'll be able to go 
uh, again back to the main web page here and see the change. So I can just toggle between these two. So right now, it should just be returning hello world because we haven't changed it yet. But as soon as this is updated, not only will the main route be different, it'll say hello YouTube tutorial, but it will also have a, an additional route called two and that will return um, that other string. So this should be updated pretty quickly here. There we go. This looks like it's the final step. And one thing that I'll probably try to do as well as log is look at the log files, uh, which is actually a command that you can run. And so let's see this. See, it says you can view the log files by running this. Okay, let's go ahead and do that, uh, which is a super helpful utility. Now we can actually look, so it's gonna look at the, the remote server's log files. So, so you can see here that it started, it's listening, great. And now if I go here, it's gonna be different. This should say, hello YouTube tutorial, boom, that works. And then if we go through here, um, these log files will start getting updated. Now I can actually go here and I can say two, there we go, hello from two. So both routes work. And then uh, I even can put in an incorrect URL. Let's try that, that should blow up. Um, and just basically, uh, as I'm tailing these log files, all these, up, all these messages will be uh, updated. So in a nutshell here, uh, we've been able to go through, deploy an application from scratch, tweak it, redeploy it, test it, look at the log files, and use also this Cloud Shell environment. So as you can tell, it's actually incredibly simple to use the Google App Engine environment to write Python code. And I think a lot of people don't know about both the Cloud Shell and also this um, editing environment and how powerful it is. I highly recommend you use both. All right, that's it. I'm going to go ahead and stop. Talk to you later. Bye.